Hi, this is take two. I'm George from Pavlicek Studios and I'll be making a glass marble from a propane oxygen torch. Glass rods. And this is a magnifying glass where I'm going to be showing you my work. It's on the tiny side, so getting a little uh, zoom in is nice. And touching everything on my camera and I accidentally restarted the feed. So let's get situated. And last week I made a turkey face marble. This week I'm going to be trying to get back to a demo that I had that I also, uh, we had internet outage here and we lost the feed a few minutes after I started the marble. So I'm going to be using some, sorry, not quite ready, there we go. So this is some UV, I wonder if we can turn off this light. small to see. Can't see those either. Alright, it's just not in the resolution of the camera to show that. Anyway, this is UV active glass. I'll be using that in a galaxy style marble that I'll be making. Um, it's going to have some color in it and a lot of this UV glass. And it's going to have some silver foil. This is it inside of a piece of rouge paper. I'll just get that rouge paper off and get it set so I can pick it up when I'm ready for that stage. There's the little paper that comes in, keeps it from oxidizing and it keeps it from sticking to the other sheets. And here's the gold. It's actual 24 karat gold leaf. And the kind of glass I use, it's fairly gentle melting, so I can actually keep that glass intact as a par particle, rather than having it uh, fume into a gaseous state and then deposit it on the glass. <clears throat> Which makes nice colors, but you're not really seeing gold then. You're mostly, you're seeing a very thin layer of what could be described as more of an iridescent. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> In here. All right. So I'm going to flash a large diameter rod. The first thing I'm going to do is get a ball melted on the end of this. And I'm going to flatten it and start picking up my metal. And then I'll start picking up some color. And then in between all those, I'm going to add a lot of UV active glass. So let's see what color do we want to put in there today. I think um, the demo that I made where it cut out, I was doing pink. So let's do purple this time. And I'm going to do a opaque purple. And I want to do a transparent purple. So our colors are ready to go. Our UV glass is ready to go. And I'm also going to get some glow powder glass. So I'll have two different kinds of UV action in the marble when it's complete. The glow powder is nice because not only is it UV active, but it also um, is UV excitable. So once UV hits it, not only will it glow immediately as those photons bounce in and out of a higher um, electron shell, they will stay excited for a period of time and appear to light uh, themselves from within for several minutes, depending on the strength of the ultraviolet light that hit the marble to begin with. So atoms like to vibrate around a nucleus in a certain area around the nucleus, like a cloud or a shell, and uh, to get something to remain glowing, you have to excite those electrons from the one shell to one that's bigger. And then as as it goes back from the bigger shell where it was excited 
to back down to the smaller one, it gives off a little light, a photon. Anyway, it's, it's going to look cool. Science crap aside, that's all just made up anyway, science. So my gather is starting to get melted on there. Coming into a ball, I'll make it a little bit bigger. This one's pretty clean. On some of those larger diameter rods, they have scratches in them. And stuff. And so if you look at them, it's hard to see at the resolution of the camera within this magnifying glass. But you can see impurities on the surface of the clear. Um, Moretti is notoriously dirty. But this is the kind of glass, it's the glass that had color that was consistent and vibrant when I started lamp working. And I ended up over the years getting so much of it that switching to a different brand was going to be a problem. But I think I'm, I'm finally working on doing that, on switching now to um, more of a, a glass blowing, uh, cullet based rather than rod based glass and I'll still work with rods but I will pull my own rods which I, I pull many of them now um, and when you start off you just want to be melting stuff so buying the rods is great um, but for so long I've been I've wanted to do my own and I end up mixing my own color and re-pulling the rods or the rods are dirty and so I melt them all in my crucible and re-pull them into rods to reuse them Sometimes I add a little um, sodium and various salts to extend the working time without over doping it to change the coefficient of expansion. Anyway, I've got a nice big gather there. Now I'm going to flatten it on this side like this. And now while it's still hot, I'm going to get a little more heat on that end and I'm going to pick up my silver. There it is. A little piece of silver I showed earlier is now on that glass. So now I'm going to keep this warm in the back flame and start heating another large rod and get that gather going as a, as a round ball on the end of the rod, just like I did this one before I flattened it. And then I'll be able to start adding the color, the, the color meat to this silver and gold foil sandwich. Some of it will be color. Some of it will be invisible ultraviolet active glass. And some of it will be magic particles that we already talked about. Hopefully you've forgotten all that science that I talked about. Because you don't want that cluttering up your brain. There's so much more that you can occupy your brain with. I don't know what that is, because nothing's occupying my brain right now, other than this glass, which is really fun. So now this glass rod had a cut end, so now that it's starting to melt, I'm going to see some little pockets of impurities forming on that, and so what you'll see me do is probably transfer this back and forth between my hands and grab a pair of tweezers, and tweeze off a little bit of the end of this rod where I'm going to see the impurities gathering. I can see a couple spots. And you re really can see it the best when the glass is orange hot and in the flame and you're wearing um, glasses that will shield the sodium flare. And so right now I do have a filter on my camera that is filtering out all the sodium. So you can, you're not really getting the big bushy yellow sodium flare that you'd normally see working this uh, crystal glass that I'm using. So, just switching hands here, and I'm going to get some of that clarity off of there before it droops around too much. And now, you can see this foil is still on there, and it's still hot, probably keeping it at about 1200 degrees. This other gather, I'm getting up much hotter because I want it to be liquid and squish it over top of that piece of foil. 
and then we'll start adding color. This is the kind of meditative portion of the glass working experience where you're just waiting for things to melt, keeping them spinning, keeping them balanced, just like the rest of your life. Rushing around, spinning things, keeping things balanced until you're ready to deal with that one molten hot issue that's coming to a head. And it's just about there. And I'm just about ready to put this gather on top of the silver. Like this, you can see it. Liquid, dripping hot. I don't usually let it drip. I did that for you guys. So you can see how cool it is. Now that silver is encased. And this will be like a stack of discs as we make this. So it's taking my opaque purple first, and then I'm gonna make a, a little dot. I wanna control the, um, the volume of the glass that I put in there as the dot, because I want it to be of a certain thickness, and I want it to spread to a certain, certain diameter. Certain diameter diameter. So I want about that much glass on there. That looks really nice. Now I'm going to get it pretty hot and then flatten it. It's going to be a combination of spreading it out and pushing it into the surface of that disc. I want to melt it so that it's smooth. The junction point between the clear and the opaque color is absolutely smooth. And while it's melting like that, I'm going to go back and grab my UV glass stringer. Melted those edges together. I'm just going to give it a little time to calm down so that when I add this molten glass to it, I'm not going to disrupt the surface because it's too soft. I want it to be firm and receptive to the little dots of UV glass that I'm going to put around the perimeter of this purple disc that I've just placed down there. I'll show you that. So those little raised dots of UV glass around the perimeter of that purple disc. Let's melt those in. While we're melting those in, I'm going to heat this big clear glass rod back up to get my next gather. So the dots of UV glass are heating up, melting into the surface. I'm going to press them together. And the end of my rod cracked off. So we're going to start over. Not the whole thing, just the heating of this rod. <clears throat> Using these big rods, they cool down and then they start to crack and you start to heat them back up and uh, they develop cracks. It's really a, a balancing act and a delicate balancing act to use large diameter Moretti rods because they are subject to thermal shock. It's a lot different than using uh, borosilicate glass where people don't worry about that at all. And the character of the clear is much clearer. Um, that kind of glass takes a lot more heat but by a factor of several to get it to move. Uh, so torches have to be bigger, you have to use more propane, you have to use more oxygen. Uh, you have to have a bigger air handling system to get rid of the waste gases. And the material itself is also more expensive by a factor of several. I used to know those numbers. Um, I don't want to throw anything out at me now because it's been several years since I did the number comparison. And so I don't think that would be a valid bunch of numbers to throw around, but it is a significant difference. And I like the challenge. I've always felt like if I've learned all I can from this kind of glass to move on to something else, um, I haven't really learned everything that I think I want to from this type of glass. 
So my gather is going again already. This is still warm. See the color and the silver in there. Let's get another gather clear on there in about 30 seconds. And then this is an opaque dot of color. Put some moving dots around it. We're gonna go on this next one to transparent purple. That's a nice contrast. clear. Press it flat. We're going to let it calm down a little bit. And while we're doing that, we're going to heat up our transparent purple. So that's ready for detail on the end. Try to put the same amount of transparent purple as we put of that opaque purple. And I got a little extra on there, so let's go ahead and take a tiny bit off. And there we go. Matching amount of purple. Let's press it. Flat. It's flat, but it's not joined um, in the surface. There's a hump, and you can see that it rises up. So we're going to heat that until it merges together and it's smooth. And while that's doing that, I'm going to get some of this glow power that I've already encased in clear glass. And heat that up, and put some dots around the perimeter. And the glow powder is going to be the kind that will glow, continue to glow after the removal of the UV light. And I'm just going to do a quick circle of this regular UV glass. It's got a nice green action when the UV hits it. So it's a, it's a circle with dots around the periphery of the glow powder and then around that, a whole ring of the UV glass this time. And for as much as I described that, it doesn't matter. Just put it in there the way, whatever way you want it. stuff inside clear glass is going to be fantastic. And um, I don't know. There's so many ways you, you can do it. And really, it's uh, taking that extra time at the end and getting that marble just spherical and smooth. The stuff inside is going to look nice. I spend many, many hours nitpicking what's going to be inside and getting it to look right and then tearing it back down so it looks a, so it doesn't look mechanically perfect. I want it to have a natural look, a softer design line. So it's like putting some imperfection back in. So it's not obviously made by a machine, it's made by a person. It's got some expression, not only in the design, but in the design finishing touches that make it personal. All right, so there's the transparent color all melted in with some glow powder and some UV glass on the surface of that disc. A little stack of clear, mostly clear discs with stuff in between them. Let's put another clear gather on there. Make that flat. And then while it's still hot, I'm going to pick up my gold. Keep that heat in the back. And then my clear glass rod is still hot, so I'm going to get another gather or two right away. And then we'll finish adding all the mass to this glass. So, a bunch of stacked dots, essentially. For those of you who have seen me demonstrate here and there over the past many years, I talk about stacked dots. There's a lot of different fun techniques you can do with stacked dots. This is one of them. Uh, for me, I have uh, the Tornado and the Galicia. 
um, but I also do a like a ribbon core. Uh, I also do a, ver a variety of what I call wisps, which are also very fun. Um, there were some other marble makers that started around the same time as I uh, that had some other cool names for, this, for the same technique that we were all sort of uh, trying to push the envelope on. So there's another gather clear. Looks like a big cylinder. Once I get all the dots on there I want, I'm going to start collapsing it into a sphere. And then I'm going to change the axis of rotation of this, of this cylinder once I've collapsed it into a sphere. Put my handles on the ends of that different axis that I've selected and add some motion to my design. This is like the dots of dense paint that I'm going to watercolor with. This is all just building that background with a little color on it. And then I'm like gonna start to swoosh it around. smooshed around with twisting and shoving metal rods into it and getting it super hot. Just better. So <laughs> painting is fun too. Alright, so now I'm gonna melt all those dots together and then I'll start collapsing it into a sphere. And once we start melting all these discs of the stacked dots together, it's going to look cool because you're going to be able to see all of the layers that we've built up over the past 20 minutes. Then we're going to really start moving it around, twisting it. I'm going to twist it um, around several axes. I'm going to select my first axis and give it some twist, a couple rotations. I'll twist it several hundred times to get that marble inside to make you know, a rotation or two. Then I'm going to switch my axis off. Not quite 90 degrees. It'll depend on what my design looks like and what I want it to look like after the next step. Then I'll impart some more twist to it. Actually, not a lot, but it's going to look like a lot. see all of those layers, the colors and the foil that we put in there. <clears throat> all right. So now I've got a stainless steel punty rod or a handle. I'm heating the end until it gets orange hot and I can push it into the glass. The glass to be a little hotter to be a little hotter I want to just go into the surface of the glass. Now I can start heating the juncture of the rod and all those layers I built up and then I'll remove this large diameter rod. We'll just have the cylinder we built attached on a metal handle. And then all the glass that's on that metal handle is going to be our marble. We're not going to take any glass off. We're not going to put any more on. It's just all going to be um, playing with that gather that we built, that, that many part stacked dot gather. It's one, two, three, four, five, six clear gathers, two layers of foil, two layers of UV, and two layers of color. So now I heat it all and I'll start shaping it in my marble mold. First thing I'll do is I'll go into, I'll show you the marble holes, they're hemispheres of graphite. I'm going to go into one of the hemispheres that's bigger in volume than the, uh, bigger in diameter than the, what the marble will be. And with general pressure and rotation, I'm going to get it approximately spherical. 
once I've got it approximately spherical, I can start imparting the motion that I want in my design. So I'm controlling, I want the heat even in this because I don't want certain parts to be too melted and certain parts to be too stiff. It has to be even because the twist I'm going to put in has to go from pole to pole throughout the entire surface to <coughs> axis evenly. I'm going to see if I can go up a little gear on my torch here. Because this is the part where I need a lot of heat. I need to get things moving a little bit faster. I have a couple of bubbles in there that I want to pick out too. I got them first try. Nice. When that works out. Alright, so I'm giving a gentle shaping in a hemisphere that's larger than the diameter of my marble. I'm briefly going into a mold where I'm just using the rim. And I've got it pretty spherical. I got a little seam in the end there. I want to heat that out. And a lot of times, if I've crimped a little valley into the glass uh, from working it too too hard, chilling the surface too fast, I'm going to have some impurities in the surface of the glass. The vitrification, a little oxidation, and so I'm just going to skim that off. Some people call that peeling. Peeling the rod, peeling the marble. I'm really not even taking off as much as you might envision a peel having. It's more like just like the skin off of what, like a grape or something. Or, the, you know, the, the skin of a balloon. <clears throat> okay. I've got that seam out. And it's pretty spherical, and you can see all the layers we've got in there. So now, I want to change my axis to, in this neighborhood, um, I'm actually going for something quite specific, but that doesn't really matter. So let me get in there, make my new attachment point, which is going to define one pole of the axis. Then I'm going to heat this one, get that out of there, heat the surface of the marble and the steel handle so that they let go, and I want to pull a little bit of glass out with that punty. And it still left a little bit of iron or steel in my clear glass that I can see, so I'm squeezing that out. Now I'm heating the, the place where the handle is attaching to the pole, hanging it down so it strains out. Now I'm heating the other handle. I'm going to attach on the other pole. All my layers. Attach on the other side. And now I'll start heating the marble. Back up. Got a little bit cool. I mean, it's still hot, but cool as far as giving motion to the glass. And now I'm. I'm mostly freewheeling this, but I'm just catching it a little bit with each turn to get some of that twisting force to go into the glass. I want it to do it evenly. I want it to do it a little bit at a time. And so, I'm going slowly see it's starting to spin. Let's do it for another minute and see where we are. I actually want the center of the marble to be a little hotter. The places where they attach can get a little bit hard. 
because I don't want them to just endlessly spin. I want that spin to go into the center of the marble. See, it's starting to turn. So for a Galicia, I would normally put a lot of twist in this first to get the foil to really shred and the twist to become almost a ball, like an angry ball of razor blades. But for this one, I'm actually going to stop earlier than I normally would. I'm going to keep one punchy end off. Attach it. Get rid of the, get rid of the glass where it attached. Now I'm going to start rounding that end a little bit. Going for like a new look. You know, you do things and you're constantly trying to perfect a certain way you're doing it. I want to make a whole different branch of this design today. <coughs> Excuse me. So that is a lot looser than I would normally do it. And I'm going to do this twist on this side looser also. this time of the year, I normally would have been looking for like new designs or a new take on a design to do the holiday marble that I do like 30 or 40 of for my friends and family. Um, this year I got those done early doing my a recycling experiment that I was doing and the marbles came out very cool, uh, sort of a blue kaleidoscope style marble with a lot of UV glass in them and also some color and adventuring. Really, so many of the, the features that I like in a marble in my style um, just came together. Uh, it was also kind of loosely a chemistry experiment for me uh, on how to correct uh, older glass uh, without ruining it. and changing some of the other features. So if you look at this, it's got like this big, once it goes around, you can see the gold and silver just like, bam, smile at you. Here, there's like all kinds of action on the side. Then you look at its face on, you can see right all the way through. And then that, just like, rings of gold and silver just get you when you're looking at it in the right direction. So now I just want to add just a little twist. I want to get the whole marble heated evenly. And just give it like a quarter turn. Subtle, so you can like just barely tell if you turn, change that. No, most people wouldn't even know that I was changing the axis. In fact, I don't, no one would know. <laughs> just my internal dialogue getting voice because I'm telling you during a demo. that's so such a different look from my normal Galicia or Tornado twists that it's really got its own I don't even know like maybe a whirlpool or something got one 
surface thing is bugging me out there. Without going deep enough to influence the design, I, I got it right away. It's always gratifying when you see a, a slight problem and you want to go in and you want to fix it. But you don't want to make it worse. You don't want to damage your other designs. So the urge is always to try to get it all at once, you know. I'd rather go, like, gently and make sure I'm in the right spot and say, oh, like halfway there, now I'm really going to go get it. Now that I've gauge the surface and the depth and the softness of glass and everything. Then I can get it perfect. Alright. Now this this end of the marble that's unattached is now spherical and it's smooth. I'm gonna hit it with my cherry wood marble paddles. I'll show you those. So, it's a cherry wood board, holes drilled in it, and I'm just using the rim of one of the holes. These are all well burned in, I've made hundreds of marbles on these paddles. Um, when I start a new one, um, I'll always make sure that I, I do like a, a practice marble where I'm just burning in the mold a couple dozen times on each hole, get some music cranking. And, <laughs> Just work your tool. Oh, that's not bad. You work your bedding, your... No. Never mind. Alright, so... I'm going to just shape the tip of this glass rod into a pencil point. And then I'm going to get the surface of the marble just the right temperature, and the pencil point just the right temperature, and oh, get them together. Make a little cold joint. This to be strong enough so that I can shape and finish this side of the marble. I'm going to heat the marble up because I want to change its shape a little bit. And as a byproduct, that handle got very hot and pulled out of the glass. And I'm so pleased with the way that this design came out looser. Just a nice, like a, a slow motion approach to something that you do all the time. Like slowing down your uh, bowling throw or your golf swing. You know, even if it's you're good at it, maybe there's room for some improvement there if you just slow down and pull it apart into its elements and see if there's something else there. And for this, I can see that there's even, there's some applications for this in other areas of glass blowing that I like, I like the idea of. So I'll probably make some notes. See if those notes have enough weight to carry forward to my future self. So many times you're doing something and you're like, oh, this came out cool. I'm going to make some notes or take a picture. And, you know, even a month later you look back on it. You're like, what was I talking about? What does that mean? I don't know. So it has to be contextual and referential. So that you understand it now, but your future self will also understand it. My future self is kind of a jerk, so I have to really explain it well. <laughs> All right, so this marble looks very spherical, but it's got just like a little offset. Giving me problems, and my cold joint came off. So I'm going to attach that. Got crooked straightening. All right, 
and that part of the marble was too hot. So it's pulling on the surface of the marble. And I'm off on a different angle of the axis that I was working on. So what's going to happen is I have to backtrack on my finishing a little bit. This is something that happens a lot when you break out of your normal routine. So, over the past month, I've made hundreds of marbles. And uh, once you get into that groove where you're making 10 and 12 marbles a day, you really, the process gets nailed down. And you're really some areas you're really learning. Some areas you might be getting really sloppy. And so when you start talking about it and going sort of in slow motion, I think some of those areas where you really learned a lot and it's coming through become evident. And then some of those areas where you become sloppy and it worked because you were doing it fast. also become that way. That probably doesn't make any sense. Let's talk about the glass instead. Yeah, the waves on this design just really neat. Can't wait to take pictures of this tomorrow. And under black light, man, that's gonna be cool. I got a new uh, cabinet with a big 100 watt black light floodlight for like doing uh, raves or uh, dance venues. But I'm pointing it all into this little tiny marble display just to set these UV marbles just on total fire visually. I don't think it'll photograph any, be any better, but in person, um, if I ever get to go out and sell or anything for the future, it'd be a really nice display. Most of the time, when you're at uh, marble shows, etc., uh, or selling out, you can't show off UV stuff. Most of the time, I'm out in the daylight, so uh, the UV stuff doesn't get showcased at all. If you're at a show that's indoors, if you don't have a display, um, people have like those little UV flashlights that they show shine on stuff which is very nice uh, because they're really um, unidirectional, uh, you know, like a beam. And so you can point it right on the marble and it looks pretty cool and you can see the like, UV action. But as far as like just being able to look at it on the shelf and see all that cool stuff going on invisibly inside, you really have to amp it up. And this uh, UV spotlight does that. Fantastic. So I'm going to try to take some pictures with that tomorrow, with this marble and maybe some other galaxies when it's done in the annealing of it. All right, so I finally got back to where I was. <laughs> Both sides are spherical. Let's run it through the cherry wood bowl one last time. Spinning it mold and changing the axis of rotation as I spin. And it wants to keep spinning, so that that's when I know it's very spherical. So, now I'm going to chill the juncture between that cold fusion joint, uh, coldly fused joint, and the marble on a fireproof tile that I have next to my torch here. I'll just chill it with these glass working jacks in this on this scale. This is the scissors. 
carbon off my torch so that doesn't end up on my marble. Pick up my torch and I'm polishing that last junction between where the glass rod was attached to the marble. I want it to melt in without burning the glass there or oxidizing it. So I heat the glass strongly and then I back off and let it calm down. Do that a couple times and then it gets nice and smooth. <clears throat> I'm going to preheat a special pair of tweezers that I've made that have a rounded area for picking up marbles I heated them up until they're glowing orange. I'm going to wait for them to turn black. And then I'm going to jiggle them as I pick up the marble. So just to make sure it doesn't stick. Or dent the marble. I picked it up. I'm going to transfer it to the annealing oven. So, turn off the oxygen first. High side of the gauge. It's empty. Zero out the low side. Shut the needle valve. Bleed my propane tank by shutting it off. Letting the propane burn out of the lines. And then closing that needle valve. So, the marble that I've made is about an inch and a quarter. So it needs to anneal for probably two hours, um, and then I will ramp the temperature down gradually. Um, and I use a rheostat. Um, I have a uh, analog pyrometer in there that is uh, non-functional. So I also have a digital pyrometer retrofitted into that so that I can check the temperature. But I mostly do that one by eye for smaller stuff. Uh, it's mostly a bead annealer. Um, but if I'm just making like three or four marbles for the day, that is the one that I will use. If I'm gonna be making, um, you know, 10 plus marbles in a day, which is basically my maximum uh, for my glass blowing style, I'll use some bigger annealers, which uh, you can see on some of my demonstrations from October, uh, which may not be on Facebook anymore, but are on uh, the YouTube channel. Anyway, um, I will look through this and see if there are any questions and answer them tomorrow when I post pictures of the marble. Uh, thanks for watching, and if you are watching and enjoyed yourself, uh, go shopping on my website because I need the business. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next week.